Fuck me. Not in the good sense. Pardon me, I, I again apologize for my fish friends. But I gotta say, guessing from your uh, bluish complexion and those pointed ears, uh, you're a moon elf, aren't you, boy? Obviously. What's your point? You wouldn't happen to be uh, related to one Moony Estiero, would you? As a matter of fact, yes. And uh, the Estiero family does not take kindly to grievances. Oh, no, no. I, I'm an old friend of the Estiero clan. Oh, good people, every last one of them. But I gotta say, uh, I, I don't appreciate your relative trying to come in and muscle in on my business. So what's your goal here? Ransom? Oh, <laughs> not at all. Uh, I'll let you all go in a moment, uh, as long as you promise to uh, butt out. So then, old friend of the family, I don't suppose... And who exactly, shall I say, sent this message? My name is Vakonsha. You just let him know that the Obscura is already taking up room here. He knows who they are well enough. So we have an agreement. I'll let you go, and when the time comes, you go your merry way, and you tell your uncle to back off. Sure. Anything for an old friend of the family. I think Kaya's been almost completely disconnected from this conversation. I think I'm gonna try the Divine Sense. The figure that just left the building is fiendish. Below your feet, there is also a powerful fiendish force. Kaya wants to go down there. So you are all led out of the um, cathedral and you enter into this area and you realize like this whole area is like this abbey is more than just one building. It's not just the cathedral. It's a whole area. Like there is a large stone wall around this whole property that has multiple guard towers positioned in it. And you see like guards positioned in the towers. Lois, you see there's an old fairy shrine off in the distance that is being overtaken by black fungus and there is like you see an area of like a large building of derelict dormitories that are being like um refurbished uh and there is also like a series of stables and a cafeteria with a kitchen and things um you pass a collapsed hen house that you see there in the process of fixing um, and there are, like, more buildings in this entire area that are all walled in by these large stone walls. This place looks impossibly old. Um, and you are led into the cafeteria, which looks like one of the first places they got going. Um, inside, you see there are several people uh, inside talking. They're all uh, marked with um, these symbols of moths on them. Uh, some of the, uh, a good deal of them are human. Some of them are from grayscale, but... Uh, not a lot. Um, and you are all brought to one table where you see Jag and Barkley waiting for you. <laughs> ah, yes. Hello. <laughs> Do you remember that desecrated abbey I was sent to fix by Sylph? Oh. Barkley nods and goes, I do believe I have found it. Good for you, buddy. It doesn't look like you will be able to fix this at the present time. I mean, aren't they trying to fix it up? Sounds like he's in the right spot. Ooh, are they? <laughs> you are all sat down at this table with Barkley and Jag. Jag is just staring forward and shoveling stew into his mouth. <laughs> oh no. He looks the angriest you've ever seen a lizard folk look. Which, you know that they oh. don't feel, um, like, they don't have the same chemical reactions in terms of emotions and th things. They're, like, a little bit more like Vulcans in that sense for Star Trek. But, like, <laughs> he is getting borderline peeved, which you know is lizard folk for furious. <laughs> mm. uh, have, have we been healed yet? No. Nope. Um, no, you have not been healed yet. We're about to eat <laughs> for the first time in a few days. Uh, and as you're being sat down, Scum, uh, is like, Our cleric will, uh, take a look at you after dinner, if that's alright. Um, 
And uh, don't try any funny business, because uh, me and my group are right at the table over. Um, and you see there's a group of what looks like um, some pretty messed up adventurers uh, at the table next to you. Um, and they are not wearing the uh, moth pins, but they are marked with the sign of the Obscura. And you notice this Jerusalem, because of that incredible Nat 20, they all have, um, for the family, tattoos and thieves can't. You see there is an angry-looking dwarf woman that is... Um, I often use this description of uh, they are as wide as they are tall, but... Um, it really does work for this, like, dwarvish woman. She's very stout, has this almost, like, rectangular, like, cube chest. She has this dark uh, green hair, almost black, that has grown out into this wild mane that cascades down her back and becomes this, like, beard. But she's, like, shaved the mustache part of her face, so she just has, like, these sideburn beard, uh, beard situation that cascades down her front, so she almost looks like she has a mane going on. Um, and she is wearing this, like, spiked, uh, armor, and she is, uh, shoveling stew into her mouth and, like, talking to this, uh, gnoll that is sitting next to her. Um, uh, Kaya, you would know this gnoll because you are from the same area as them. He is this, uh, small, skinny hyena man. His fur is, like, bleached white, and he is dressed up in, like, these greens and uh, tans that you would know from uh, the orchard diaspora is like the best kind of clothes that they can make with what they have in that area. Um, and Christian. across, oh yes, Kaya. Uh, because of how in the orchard diaspora we all kind of just travel together as like a nomad group, could I roll for maybe have known him? Uh, there are like multiple herds in the Orchard Diaspora, okay, but yes, so it's you not can. just one. Yeah, but you can sure roll a luck check. Uh, okay, so a luck check is not adding anything. Yeah, just roll a d twenty flat. Okay, eighteen. Uh, yeah, you don't know who this guy is. Ah, oh, that would have had to be like a nat twenty. Cause <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people, but I don't know him. <laughs> Considering the size of this continent that Riley has created. <laughs> Yeah, around the area, uh, like, the size of South America or Africa. And the Orchard Diaspora takes up a good portion of the middle. And sitting across from them, you see a human-looking person whose skin is pale, 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 like, whitish blue. He has this hair that looks like it just got dried off from a shower. So it's got that, it's still kind of damp, but also kind of wispy and like a uh, flushed kind of like messed up look. Looks pretty good on him, honestly. Um, and he is reading a book. He has these glasses that he has pushed up on his face that are look like they're fogged over. Like condensation is collecting on his rims. And he, he looks kind of just damp. And he is wearing uh, open-chested robes, li like, a, like a doublet with a deep V, and like these blue wizard robes that he is not bothered to like tie up or anything. Um, and he is reading a book and eating stew. How appealing does the stew look? Yeah, what kind of stew is it? <laughs> I'm expecting it to be so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a skill check. <laughs> For the chef. Oh no! I rolled a two! <gasps> this is the worst stew you've ever seen. Oh no. This is truly a miserable, miserable meal. Kaya rolled a five on keeping it down. She is not eating. You, like, you look at your bowl. You don't, you can't sit down because there are no chairs for a centaur here. Um, you pick up a bowl, you lift it up, a cricket, like, surfaces out of the brown muck. <laughs> just a dead cricket. Hmm. Kaya just puts it back down gently and... <laughs> Should we all roll constitution? <laughs> if you like, sure. I'm I'm not going to because I think Lois was a Lois was on the street for a good bit and mm, fair. food is food and like he puts up an act but like he feels like a shit. Yeah. He can only put up half of the act right now. Said he was a cricket. Uh there's a cricket in Kaya's, yes. Yeah, I feel like he just goes you're picky. And just, it starts, like, he looks at Kaya as he's sitting down. He looks so tired. His hair's a mess. It's just, mm. this is not the Lois they have 
come to associate being like immaculate 24 7 basically and just starts eating he's just not even like bats an eye I'm not picky. I have standards. And meanwhile, even though Kai is grown up at a, like, monastery, humble school, Jerusalem came from an elven place where they probably got some of the best food in the world. Yeah. Anyway, I got a nine. <laughs> He's not. He he tastes it and then just pours it into J- uh, Jag's bowl. <laughs> J- Jag continues to eat just, it is sustenance. I'm not even convinced this is edible. I am used to simple meals, but I am not eating mud. It's not mud. Mud tastes worse. And he just keeps going! Uh, He has a point! (laughs) Um, the dwarf, like, laughs and, um, shovels more of this awful stew into her mouth. She's like, this is the absolute worst thing I've ever had, but it's food! And if there's one thing you have to know, is that you don't know if you're going to get more food or drink. So eat what you are given. Um, And she lifts up her bowl of stew and just pours it into her mouth and starts to chug it like it's a competition. Um, And just bits of stew runs into her beard. If I can get my belongings, I have rations. Waterlogged rations still might even be better. It's fine. And Lois literally goes, you two have never known what it's like to be hungry for more than a day. Well, no. Kai's eyes just shoot up. Why do you think I've hired Crumpet? Yeah, obviously. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you know what? I haven't rolled to see how Crumpet is doing in a bit. Oh no. (laughs) He leveled up mysteriously while we were gone. Yeah, one moment. Okay. He's like, he's he's walking around and suddenly just like, Goes up to level two. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, again, Lloyd is probably always pretty nice to Kaya. And this is, again, the meanest he's probably ever sounded to Kaya. Lloyd, uh, Jerusalem, Lloyd talks shit too. Yeah, but you're, you're hardly even verbal sparring with Jerusalem right now. So it's, like, kind of obvious something's wrong. <laughs> it's called Lloyd doesn't have the, uh, energy to put up the act. Honestly, like, Kaya expects, like, her teammates to have bad days and to not want to put on a facade of being nice or whatever. But, like, she is upset that you are, like, insulting her. Yeah, it's also pretty wildly misplaced because Kaya came from, like, a desert filled with undead. Yeah. And, uh, lycanthropy. (laughs) Like, her home is this desolate wasteland with not a lot of food, ravaged by several, like, arcane curses. I'm saying the fact that she can be picky to Lois, it literally, like, shows that. Again, Lois is not putting up the act. This is the, I grew up on the streets kid. Like, this is not the refined taste that he's come to develop. No. And that's the thing. They've never seen this. Because he doesn't like talking about it. She's like, you can be sad and upset, but stop being rude. Damn. <laughs> A thing that maybe Kaya should say in character. Jerusalem gets up <laughs> and walks over to the other um, table of all the the um, other Obscura members and family members. And, the Obscura. Yeah. And in Thieves' Can't, he actually... Um, goes up to uh what was what was the the name of the the woman that is our leader it, her name is scum yeah the leader scum i don't like saying that <laughs> anyway um he goes up to her and is in thieves can't is just like what is the family i haven't heard of it um she replies in thieves can't in turn uh she goes it's my family um, and she gestures at the Obscura that are sitting at the table. Jerusalem kind of nods, and he's like, I see. Do you go around, is the Obscura your guild, or is that one that you're just working for at the moment? Um, she gestures back in, uh, what the thief can't for, we were absorbed, is. Obscura was around before us. We got eaten up by it. Now we work for them. 
in Shadowhorn? Uh, she nods. Hey, while are you do using Thieves Cant, I personally like Thieves Cant being a sign language. Oh, yeah. I also really like that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it also will have to be like a series of written symbols of some for- form because it's tattooed on yeah. these people. But yes, I, I like the idea that it is mostly uh, a secret sign language like hand gestures that you guys are doing at each other right now. Conversational. We'll call it conversational thieves can't use sign yeah. language because you have to be quiet. <laughs> um, I just I had the thought of shadow horn. And if you were to like literally put that into a sign language, it would look so funny. I was taking notes for Kaya's journal. Now I have to delete that because she's yeah. not hearing this. Kaya wouldn't yeah. does not speak Thieves Can't, and neither does Lois. You don't even know Thieves Can't. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Um. I guess he just kind of wanted to know that. Mm-hmm. Um. He asks, "How do you feel about that?" Um. She says out loud, "How about you eat your stew?" I'm not really hungry anymore. Oh, so it's gone. <laughs> yeah, he already pulled it, pu- poured it into Jag's bowl. <laughs> um, she shrugs, puts some in her mouth, grimaces a little bit, but swallows. Uh, and she goes, uh, this is the best they're gonna have until uh, they get this place up and running again. Looks like you haven't been here that long, then. Uh, relatively recently. We're mostly here, uh, bodyguards, really. So, Jag's very good boat, was it taken around here? A blank stare. Did they leave our boat? Don't see how they're expecting us to get off this place if we don't have our boat. Oh, we'll take care of that. Mm Mm-mm. Jag would probably like his boat back, though. She says that, and Jerusalem just has this, like, flash of everyone in, like, burlap bags over their heads. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Being, like, carried off so they can't come back to this place. Mm. He does not like the the idea that (laughs) they would be taking them away instead of just leaving them. Yeah, you are gonna need to be blindfolded. Um, maybe knocked out. Hmm. We can't have you, uh, you know, tracing this place back. Uh, Mirage, do you know sleep? Um, and, uh, the, w- the guy with the, co- the condensation on his glasses, um, takes off his glasses, very quickly rubs the, like, the fog off them and places them back on his head. They immediately start to do over again. Um, he flips a page in his book and he goes... Um, yes, I do believe I know sleep. It might take a few tries, but we could have them unconscious in no time. Ah. Um. (laughs) Jerusalem's just kind of there like, uh, good luck with that. Hmm. No problem. You know, we'll knock you out, you'll have a pleasant dream, when you wake up, you'll be back in town. Hit up a bathhouse. (laughs) Jerusalem just kind of like rubs the bump that's already on his head. (laughs) Right, elf. You don't sleep, do you? Um, well, for that, we have Borla. Hmm. Um, you look at the dwarf who just mimes punching herself in the face, and then mimes teeth flying out of her mouth, and then puts her hands together in the sleeping motion and lays her head down on her hands and mimes snoring. <laughs> Just was like, yeah, 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 I got it. Thanks. <laughs> Lois just goes, in different circumstances, Borla, what's the name, would be someone wonderful to talk to. <laughs> Wrong. I'm awful. <laughs> you don't want to talk to me. Depends. No, no, I suck. I- I'm going through my inventory and my spells, trying to figure out if there's some way we can, like, put a tracker. You don't have your inventory on you. Completely gone. Yes. All- I- I should set up your abilities. All of your abilities, um, have reset there at full, but your health- po- your hit points are all at one. Currently. Yeah. And we don't have our stuff. Yes. Yeah. 
which I assume we'll get back, but whether or not that's mm-hmm. before or after they bring us home is... I don't like this <laughs> at all. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Jerusalem goes back and sits down next to Kaya and Lois, and it's like, I don't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna say it. Like, he does. neither of us like it, me or Jerusalem. <laughs> and there's more to it, I believe. When we were in the Abbey, I sensed something under it. Something evil. And I don't know what it is, but I, I can't leave it there. It's gonna be something related to, you know, the person I mentioned. Uh, would Kaya and Jerusalem know anything about that? I literally sent you guys message. No, like, would do we already know stuff about the thing that you mentioned, or... Is that just a name that you said that we now know? And technically, Lois didn't even say the name. <laughs> no, he said the moth guy that created the moth race. That was, like, yeah. big news. Yeah, yeah. so asking we... Riley, is that a thing that Jerusalem and I would know about? Um, no. We know about it. Uh, m- maybe Kaya might. Kaya, roll religion. Didn't we already hear okay. that there was, like, a whole... You heard that there was a new race of no, moth No, we heard people. about that, but I'm asking if I know about the god. Yeah. You know about Sylph. Oh, you I see. would not, then you know Sylph is responsible for the moth people. You would not know about the other individual in that relationship. I see. Okay, because I know that I said the demon, like, I definitely did say the, like, the demon. Okay, so don't roll for religion on that. Um, you could roll religion, uh, cause, like, Lois said the moth guy that Sylph had the, the new moth kin with. So, like, yeah, the moth demon lord guy would be enough for Kaya to roll. Like, now that she has that information, she could try and piece it together if she gets high enough on a religion check. Okay. Uh, 18, that's wisdom? Wisdom in my games, yes. Okay, uh, so that's a 21. Um, yeah, so you know that, <laughs> you know a lot. Um, I am knowledgeable of these things. Uh, so at the bottom of the pillar is a realm called the Lowest, which is basically like this world's hell. This is where all the fiendish forces come from. Um, hell is ro- ruled by a race called devils, which are made out of the fallen souls of former celestials and humanoids, uh, of, like particularly evil humanoids, um, and they rule over the lowest, but what they have access to is this kind of eternal pit of, like, evil, which they make a race called demons out of, which are servants of devils that are, like, not made out of human souls, are not fallen creatures at all, the- Demons are just embodiments of evil. However, sometimes when they pull up a big enough blob, it'll make a thing called a demon lord, which is an immensely powerful demon. Um, And these things are powerful enough and like sapient enough, uh, sapient enough that they can gather like followers on the material plane and other things. Um, What you would know is there is a demon lord known as Ropaloserix, who is supposedly this demon lord of um, false appearances and, like, evil beauty, who is this, like, big, horrible moth creature. And all the cultists wearing moth stuff, sacrificing moths, starts to make a little bit more sense to you. Also, with that information, you would know the, the deity Sylph mated with a demon lord to make a new race of moth people on the planet. You don't know what that would mean. All right. But now you know that there's fiend direct fiendish heritage and a fiendish connection with one of the gods in this in this new race. And K- Kaya just starts furiously taking notes in her journal. <laughs> Jerusalem just being entirely frustrated that he has no way to just like secretly talk to Lois and Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't even write something down and pass it to them. <laughs> I have message and that's why i did that with the demon thing i was like uh he can't even use thieves can't with you guys because one the other people would know because it's thieves can't they'd be there (laughs) and two you guys don't know it so he's like we cannot plan anything we cannot scheme we cannot do anything but comply (laughs) 
Yeah, for now. Unless Kaya wants to just kind of tear up the whole place. Which, in that case, we're probably going to die. <laughs> she wants to, but she's she's at one health, and she knows it's probably not best. I think we should all take a long rest and see what happens <laughs> tomorrow. Gee, it's almost like we have to go talk to the doctor man. All right, that was the thing. <laughs> I mean, we I was just going to say, let's go to bed and have all our health points by tomorrow. The thing about that is, Kaya would not want to sleep. <laughs> if they were going to kill us, they would have done it already. She does not trust these people, she does not trust those fishmen, she does not trust that demon guy, and she does not trust the thing under the church. Tristan's like, Kaya, they've taken all of our stuff. If they wanted to kill us, they would have done it already. That doesn't mean they won't attack us. They, they did it already. The whole point of the man apologizing was because... Apparently, the whatever the hell those fishmen were got carried away. It wasn't exactly an apology, it was more of a threat. Whatever. I trust the fishmen more than that man over there. Beggars can't be choosers in this instant. We are, don't have a lot in our arsenal right now. They definitely do, so we'll take it as an apology. Because we don't have a choice. Well, I'm done with dinner, if we want to go. <laughs> Kaya's also done. Neither of them have eaten. <laughs> yeah, they were both just sitting there in silence, and Jerry's little just like, well, I'm done. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> I know, and like, the thing where they were like, oh, I want to do stuff, and Lois was like, in his head, he was like, you dumbasses haven't even eaten. Like, yeah, it's not the best, but it's not like... We haven't eaten in days. I think we can wait another day. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, Lloyd does not like the idea of being hungry. But he's just like, yeah, whatever. We can go see the doctor or whatever. If anything, the cricket might be better outside of the stew than it was in it. And Lloyd looks, I feel like Lloyd looks directly at Jerusalem and goes, it's protein. Just dead face. And Jerusalem's just like, yeah, don't people normally eat, like, locusts and stuff in the desert? Kai, you should know this. You think of Crumpet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. A horse can live almost a month without food. That, yeah, but what about... Centaur. It's not good. It does the same thing as, like, what a human stomach does, but of, like, you get really hungry and lethargic and stuff, but still, a month... It starts yeah. eating its own um, stomach lining and such. Yeah. I feel like that would slow it down being a centaur, but you would still, like, you need to keep up the human energy, not just the horse energy. Yeah. With that, Kaya might, like, she would be very, very tired. Like, because horses have larger hearts, so they beat a little slower than humans, but yeah. you have two hearts, I think. Yeah! Does a centaur have two hearts? Yes. Human half. Wow, they do. You have a heart in your you have the horse heart and you have the human heart. Same as you have multiple stomachs, almost like a cow. <laughs> Centaurs also have two stomachs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Kai is learning a lot about herself today. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Didn't you, like, centaurs have four lungs? <laughs> it's a good thing we have Google to give us accurate information. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, didn't you all talk about the, the, um, if I remember correctly, the literal, like, skeleton of it last yeah, time or something? Yeah, trying to figure out, like, where it connected. Anyways, can we move the story along? I'm sorry, I'm looking at how centaurs reproduce. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want I don't want to know about that. Why would you want to know about that? I mean, would it go to the horse womb or does a human wo woman have a womb? I don't think she has. I think yeah, it's one. I think it's the I think the <laughs> I actually want to say both. Weird. 
Reese, consider this. Humans give birth prematurely because they cannot fit the baby's head. So, if it went from the human body down to the horse body and then finished maturing... Huh. It's not, um, because of the way they are portioned from... No, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Because the sperm wouldn't be able to get up that far. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> this sure is intense. not relevant to the adventure we're doing. <laughs> Unless Kaya is planning on getting pregnant. No. <laughs> I have nothing against that, Kaya. You Not do you. Not anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think that's something we want on the air. <laughs> um, where I leave, we're waiting for you. You tell me what you do. We said we were going to see the doctor man. <laughs> or whoever. Okay. Um, if you voice that to the Obscura, um... They're like, all right, we'll set you up in some of the guest rooms, and uh, then we'll have Kunkona come take a look at you. And they lead you out, and you see uh, there's, like, attached to the do- uh, the dormitory building, there are, like, a couple of rooms that are attached on the side um, that are, are, it appears, formerly guest rooms for people visiting this abbey um, that have been restored and fixed up uh, to the best of this cult's ability. And they're like... Uh, we don't exactly have a lot of visitors, but, um, you're gonna have to take one, because we're taking the other five. <laughs> uh, I feel like with that, Lois, go- uh, Lois looks at them and goes, I'll sleep anywhere, for starters, but that one, he points to Jerusalem, doesn't need sleep, and I don't know about the whole thing with Kaya. Well, far be it from us to not help our guests. We welcome you to Guest Quarters 5. Um, and they point at the one at the end that looks like it's maybe in the worst amount of condition. And they're like, and uh, I will warn you, your roommate, uh, just in guest room number four over there, is in fact Borla. And uh, the dwarf woman scratches her beard and goes like, yeah, so... uh." I snore. All right. Lois literally looks at the rest of the braid and just goes, I'm going to conk out either way. I don't know about you two. Will the doctor be needing us in there, or must we go meet him somewhere else? Kona quietly raises a hand and is like, uh, I'm, I'm the doctor. They don't have an actual medic on hand, so they rely on me. Well, then, will you be meeting us in there, or shall we meet you elsewhere? I can see you in the room. Thank you. And Kaya goes to the room. (laughs) Jerusalem's, like, holding this in, and then he's like, Ah, I gotta say it. I imagine you have a good eye for medicine. (laughs) Kinkona blinks at you. (laughs) Voice just sighs. I rolled for it, Kaya smacks you. (laughs) Just like a Wait. bath on the back of the head. I have one nail point. <laughs> it's it's not a punch. She just like it's the the hey, stop that kind of bath that she gives you on the back of the head. The one she normally does for Lois. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like Lois and uh Jerusalem basically switched personalities this moment. Lois is the one that's not talking and everything, while Jerusalem is like, mmm. I mean, Jerusalem's normal. For one, he got a full night's rest. <laughs> Three days rest. <laughs> Three days rest. He may be a little hungry, which is kind of making him cranky, but at the same time, he's still <laughs> gonna be himself. Yeah, Jerusalem acts at, like, maybe a 20. Lois is usually at a 100 and is now at, like, a negative 3 right yes. now. <laughs> it's not that Jerusalem's talking more, it's just that Lois is talking less, <laughs> and that makes a big... <laughs> It just, it makes it seem like Jerusalem is talking more. <laughs> and also the fact that Jerusalem usually lets Lois talk, but since he knows Lois isn't going to, he's like, oh, I have to. I must break the silence. <laughs> <laughs> also, let me just say, Jerusalem was highly disappointed that Lois did not laugh. Because <laughs> Lois is normally the one to back him up on the puns. Oh, uh, Normally, but now, right now. Okay. Riley, tell me, does the dwarf laugh? Um, 
Yeah, Borla cracks up. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you only really have one eye. Um, she's just, she is having a great time. All right. You all five shuffle into the one room, I guess I have to say, because none of you are doing it. Yeah. I, I said Kaya goes okay. to the room. Okay, great. Um... You are all, all five of you are placed into this tiny guest room while the rest of the, uh, Obscura wander off. Um, we really only need, we only need two beds. Because Jerusalem doesn't sleep. Lois wants to sleep. Kaya really just needs a blanket and some hay in a corner. We have a construct who doesn't need to sleep. And then there's Jag, who probably wants to sleep. Uh, Lois literally said he will sleep anywhere. Yeah. He does not care. So, Jag looks at you and goes, I will be using the bed. If you require it also, you will have to share it with me. And immediately crawls into the bed. Lois just goes, I don't give a damn. And just, like, literally, without preamble, not even asking for a blanket, Lois definitely just curls up. Like, he's on the yeah. floor, just curls up. Okay. Um, so it looks like Jag gets the bed, Jerusalem is gonna meditate in a corner, Kaya is gonna kneel with a blanket, um, and Barkley is just gonna stand. <laughs> Does that all sound right for the sleeping arrangements? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah! One moment. Unless Kaya wants to lie on top of Lois. <laughs> with her human half, not her full body. <laughs> Let uh. me just say I'm I'm just saying like Lois and Kaya could curl up and stay warm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm rolling for right now. Cause she's a little miffed to him, but also she's a sweetheart. Yeah. She sees Lois just go and curl up by himself and she like goes to a corner to grab a blanket and like she thinks about it for a moment and then she coughs over to Lois and sits down next to him and just curls up over there with the blanket over both of them. <laughs> I will say he doesn't really react because for him it's just like he's kind of trained his own body to just when he needs to sleep, he needs to sleep. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking about it in a way of how Kaya would have been raised in her own home and she grew up with a lot of brothers and siblings, mostly brothers, though, um, in, like, small tents. And so she would be used to, like, dog piles of sleep. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, as you all settle in, um, Kunkona comes in, um, walks around, uh, gives a small bit of healing magic to all of you, just to, l informs you that you won't feel the results immediately, um, but this will basically allow you to start, like, get healing and getting back on the mend, as opposed to, like, the pretty beat-up and desperate shape you've been in for days. And, uh, as Kinkona is going around, Kinkona kneels by you, uh, Lois, and pulls out the holy symbol of Sylph and presses it against you, and, uh, when they're talking to you, uh, whispers something to you in Sylvan, which is, like, the language of the fa uh, the fairies. Yeah? Yeah, I, I assume Lois knows Sylvan, because Lois grew up in, with, like, in the Feywild. He, uh, he probably, yeah, it makes sense, he most likely picked it up once, because he was young enough to be able to pick it up quickly, just... Yeah, Lois spent a lot of their childhood, like, growing up in the Feywild after Sylph, like, found them and brought them with them. Um, which is kind of interesting to think that, like, Lois spent a lot of their childhood, like, in a different dimension, pretty much. But, yeah, um, Kinkona comes to you, uh, pulls out the holy symbol of Sylph, um, and whispers, like, are you a follower of Sylph, too, to you and Sylvan? I would say in Sylvan, he responds, yes, I am. Um, Kinkona says, I'm a cleric of Sylph, I'm Sorry for how they treated you. And he just kind of goes, been through worse. I just imagine, though, like, Kaya is, like, la laying, and Lois is speaking this language that she even, she's just, like, she's, like, probably... Yeah, she's listening. It sounds a little bit, like, elvish, 
but it's a lot more complicated. Uh, there are some words that are like borrowed words uh, from El- uh, that like the beca- uh, Elvish borrowed words from like Sylvan and everything. It seems like the Elvish language is an evolution of Sylvan. Like Sylvan is something more ancient and pure that like Elvish was derived from. Um, so like if you know Elvish, you might be able to piece together some similarities and stuff. But like. Um, you still wouldn't be able to understand what they're saying unless you can speak Sylvan. But yeah, so Lois just goes, I've dealt with worse. Kinkona just says, um, I believe they are doing their best to follow Sylv. Um, and gets up and seems like they're gonna leave. And if you guys don't do anything. No. Um, Jerusalem doesn't think it's very strange, considering he just did the same thing with Thieves' Cant, so... Okay. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's not too weird. He He's like, anything that c- will allow us to have a private conversation in this place, please. <laughs> so, um, as Kinkona leaves, you are all left alone, and immediately, uh, like, as soon as things quiet down, and you start to hear snoring from next door, Barkley immediately goes, I would very much like to drive these people out of this building. I'm glad we are on the same page, Barkley. This is what Sylph sent me to do. We should do our best to remove them. Violently, if need be. How do you plan to do that with us being outnumbered? Barkley blinks um, and goes, we should find our things, and then those of us with magic can help those that don't have magic until we gather up our stuff, and then we will be able to launch an assault, a coup. Great idea, Barkley. Uh, tell me if you find them. Uh, uh, Lois goes, I will say that the one that healed us is a cleric of Sylph, and so that is what I was able to gather, meaning that I, they most likely don't realize the connection fully of who they're all kind of interacting with. With all due respect to that random person we have barely met, I do not think that they know what they are talking about. They're hired. Sometimes money is money more so than your beliefs. Having a roof over your head is sometimes a bit more important. Hired is putting it loosely. If they are a servant of Sylph, they should do what Sylph wants them to do. This does not seem like something Sylph would want them to do. Sylph sent me here to fix this abbey. To make sure that these people would stop Ruining it. I don't think it's the one, the Thieves Guild, that are specifically doing it. And if they are, again, money is money. They are working for someone a lot more dangerous. And they might not even know who it is. I don't even know who it is, and that's saying something. Barkley, I believe the problem is with the thing that is under the temple itself. While the people up here may not know what is going on, that thing down there is probably what Sylph is concerned about. Uh, Barkley's head kind of lowers. Barkley just goes, If they are working for people who are bad, and they are hired to defend them, then they are in the wrong as well. I'm not saying they're not in the wrong. I'm just saying we should try and figure out how to deal with the thing down there as well as how to not have to worry about who's up here as well. Make thing, It makes things a little bit complicated. For now, I believe we should get some rest. I second that. If we take a whole long rest, then people will be waking up the same time that we do. We will not have a chance to act while they are surprised. If we are surrounded by the Obscura, we will not be able to strike. How much can you heal on a short rest? 
Um, so on a short rest, you have a number of hit die equal to your level. Um, and you can roll those hit die and add your constitution modifier, and that is how much you are healed, pretty much. Hmm. Place goes, if you, Barkley, can think of a wonderful plan while we are all healed, all dealing with the repercussions of getting our asses handed to us by the fish men, then I would love to hear it. We should gather up what energy we have and sneak out and find our things. Once we are armed, we should attack while they are surprised. And then we can drive out this corrupting influence from Sylph's Abbey and return it to proper believers. What well, makes you so certain they'll be surprised? I imagine they have guards, night watch. You are a rogue. And they're they're all thieves. Some of them are thieves, who are sleeping next door. Yes, and with that meaning that while we have a rogue on our own side, they're not going to be surprised very easily. Barkley, baby. No, it's fine. Uh, Barkley just doesn't say anything. Um, Barkley says, Then we will comply for now until we are returned to Shadowhorn. We gather our forces and then we attack at that point. We will overcome the walls and then drive them out. But that may be more difficult. Especially because we likely won't know how to get back here. Barkley nods. Considering Kaya can sense the energy here, and it is a temple of silk. Kaya just vibrating. <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of temples of silk that get, that are desecrated in some way. I think we can narrow it down from that. Uh, Kaya, y you would know that your divine sense only extends 60 feet. It is not so much of a spider... It's more of a spider sense than, like, an evil compass. Yeah. And it only lasts six seconds. <laughs> yeah. This may be, like, a beacon, but at the same time, it's... <laughs> this place is so old, I don't imagine anyone remembers it. <laughs> it seems to have fallen into disrepair for some time. We can figure it out. It's... <laughs> There's gotta be some older people... Who know this? It's not. Again, we are not dealing with all complete ruins. If this place is still standing, it is in disrepair. It doesn't mean that someone doesn't know. Hey, Barkley, you are awake a lot longer than some of us. Um, did you happen to learn anything else? I'm gonna roll for Barkley. Okay. Barkley okay. baby, come on. Um, okay. The Obscura work as an adventuring guild in town, but that is mostly as a cover and serving some purpose for their leader. They were hired in Libertina to help guide this group down into this area, at which point the group took up residence in this abbey and has begun retrofitting it and preparing it for some sort of ritual, which the Obscura have stayed on to guard. That is all I have been able to glean. Wait, wait. Jag, um, goes. <laughs> Sometimes, some of the creatures will walk into the cellar, and they won't come out for a very long time. Now that's some good information. And Lois is about to say, now that gets us somewhere. <laughs> they both say it at the same time. Barkley lowers their head again. <laughs> Barkley looks sad. <laughs> <laughs> Lois just goes, you're still... How young are you? Um, Barkley does not answer that. 
And Lois just goes, I'm going to assume you're still rather young. You pick up things as you grow older. I'm not a little boy. <laughs> no! no, no, no. <laughs> Kaya stands up and drops the blanket onto Lois. It's like, Barkley, could I speak with you for a moment, please? And she walks, like, to the other side of the room. I will say, this room is, like, ten feet wide. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting anywhere. She could still talk quietly to him, though. Sure. Um, Kaya just, like, turns to Barkley and tries to speak quietly. Um, just... Barkley, I believe that you and I are the only ones on the same page right now of we need to stay. Am I correct? Um, Barkley lowers their head and goes, I do not believe that is the case. I think with some convincing, the others will aid us. Jerusalem does not like these people very much, and Lois is also a follower of Sylph, so I do believe that they are on our side. In theory. Yes, Barkley, those are true statements. <laughs> <laughs> I have known them for a while now, and while I hope you are right, if they do not want to stay and aid us here, I will be ready after a short rest to help you evacuate this temple. Uh, Barkley nods. And Kaya nods as well, and goes back to sit next to Lois. <laughs> Jeez, Kaya, stop moving around. Lois is trying to sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> Lois, honestly! I know, I know. <laughs> I don't think she even gets under the blanket. I think she just kind of tucks Lois in. Aww. Lois is probably, like, on the verge of passing out, just, just so tired. <laughs> He's done with the day. <laughs> yeah, despite the fact that you guys only woke up like two hours ago or so, not even two hours ago, like an hour or so ago, um, because we're not, we're accounting for like time having passed while you guys were eating and everything. You still feel relatively exhausted. Like you guys weren't sleeping exactly. Mm -hmm. Being unconscious does not help you yeah. uh, feel physically rested. That is a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we feel like shit. Yeah. I mean, I've done everything I wanted to do. Like, from here on out, it is all up to you guys. I am I am taking the back seat. Yeah, I did my bit. Kaya's taking a nap. Yeah. I introduced the area, I introduced the characters and the players and what's going on, and now I wait for you guys to act upon this information. Um, I... What I know is that Lois definitely wants to look into the Obscura more, mainly because he recognizes the symbol, but in his opinion, it's like, right now, we're so outmatched, it's just like, not even funny, and he doesn't want to go into a situation he can't be in complete control of, of at least, hey, we know what we're doing, so I want to at least know, like, what the game plan is, because this is different than all the times we've dealt with the surprises. Like, when we were looking for um, the Lumi, we knew exactly what we were aiming for, and we got there, and we were prepared. That's why we were able to kick ass with the, uh, the fiends and stuff, because we knew what we were doing. And Lois doesn't like going into things without knowing either. And either just drew some from what I've gathered, so... Yeah, Jerusalem's kind of like, they, they, their lackeys beat us up, and now we're in the middle of all of the actual, like, <laughs> hires. <laughs> this is not a good situation. They <laughs> were beat up by fish people! He's definitely like, his intention is to go back to his uncle and be like, what the heck, man? <laughs> <laughs> and then be like, you gotta help us take this guy down, he screwed us over. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not, it's more, it's not like Lois doesn't really care, like, it's more so that Lois doesn't, Lois knows that you can wait a little bit for something when, uh, if you know that you have the upper hand, and right now they are nowhere near having the upper, right, the upper hand right now, so he's not gonna risk that. 
But I think you could probably convince Jerusalem if you wore him down enough. and mm-hmm. mm. Or either wore him down or riled him up enough to go with your plan. <laughs> Reminded him how much these people pissed him off. Yeah. He'll either go along begrudgingly, or if you get him on board, he'll be like, all right, I'm taking over. Yeah, Lois is honestly just thinks we need to have a better hand. So it's really going to be... I honestly think Lois might be the hardest to convince, mainly because of that. Lois is like, I'm... We're dealing with shit that's really big. Kaya knows we're dealing with shit that's really big. But, like, she's kind of meant for this. I am not. Um... So, so once Kaya and Barkley kind of... Kaya starting her sleep and Barkley starting his uh, trance, um... Jerusalem goes over to Lois and kind of, uh... Reese, is Lois awake? I imagine, yes, he's been acting like he's asleep just because it's been a long day. He doesn't want to interact with anyone. Let him be. (laughs) Okay. Um, Jerusalem goes over and kind of, like, sits down, uh, by him. And is like... Alright, so... I think they're right about that dwarf snoring is going to be... Uh, making sure nobody can hear us, but, like, I don't know what Kaya and Barkley are up about, but we're on the same page here, right? We're going to play along. The Obscura will let us go, however, in whatever bad shape, and then we'll come back later with reinforcements, right? Yeah, of course. I'm... We got our asses handed to us by fish people. You really yeah. think I want to just go out guns blazing when we barely made it out of that interaction and these people seem to be far more competent than uh I don't what would you say blasphemous fish people? I don't know, whatever it is. I'm not going to deal with that. Play along and get us out. <laughs> That's my plan. I particularly want to know what this Vakasha is up to. I would prefer not to, considering the connection, but we do need to get rid of the cultist presence in Sylph's temple, but definitely not right now. I don't really care about that part, but whatever's up for you, you know. I think that Sylph would not be a big fan of me just ignoring this, but I can't just... We can't just go in, uh, Ron's, Ron's at the ready or whatever. Ugh. Well, I'm not very keen on giving up our contract, considering it is with family. Exactly. So we can come back to this, but right now, I hope, I hope to Sylph they don't do anything stupid. Ha! Kaya sneezes in her sleep. <laughs> experience listeners it's end credits time i know you love hearing this part but i like to remind you guys that you can find us on tumblr instagram and even tiktok and if you like to buy the music you can buy it all at markexperience.bandcamp.com we also have a constantly growing collection of merch at redbubble.com slash people slash mark dash experience where you can buy posters and shirts and stickers and all that if you want to support your favorite editor and musician you can head over to my coffee account at coffee.com slash Jamie Remy. That's spelled J-A-M-I-E-R-E-M-Y. Mark Experience can be located basically anywhere podcasts exist now, so you can listen wherever's easiest. See you next episode!